Hi everyone, it's Matthew here from Bead Spider. How are we all going today? Uh, so today we're going to be doing some macrame. I've got pretty much two tutorials in one today. So first I'm going to show you, so make sure you stick around for the whole video. First I'm going to show you how to create the gorgeous honeycomb bracelet, which is this little fella just here. Um, and I'm also going to show you how to create the fantastic sliding knot clasp that will make your jewellery into a one-size-fits-all piece of perfection. So as you can see, this is everything I'm going to be teaching today. If you've been watching recently, I've been doing lots and lots of videos. So definitely, if you've missed any recently, I do them Wednesdays and Saturdays. So head on back and check them out. If you're on YouTube, you will be able to see them all on YouTube. If you're on Facebook, you can find them on Facebook. And they're also on the Bead Spider website as well. So definitely check those out. There's a lot of things on there. I'll tell you in a minute what I did last week, and I'll let you know what's coming in the following week as well. But first, let's say hello to a few people, shall we? Uh, we've got Evelyn on today. She just told me that, uh, unfortunately, her husband's having a bit of bad health at the moment. So, um, you know, get well soon to him, Evelyn. Um, but thanks again for watching. And she said she's really looking forward to doing some macrame. So uh, definitely best wishes for him. But um, thanks for watching. Um, we've also got Anita. She's watching from Johannesburg in South Africa. Thanks for watching, Anita. Um, and Marsha's watching. We've got Barbara in Italy. So many people all over the world. Uh, Caroline's on. We've got uh, Annelies from Holland on too. Mum's watching, of course. Uh, Maxine's upstairs watching. Um, as well, we've got Alicia and Elaine, Francis on, Sue, so many people's watching. Um, so, one thing that I'll get into very, very quickly, if you want to be featured on the show, uh, I do this every show, send us your pictures to live at beadspider.co.uk and I will try and get your pictures featured on the show here. So whatever you've been making, what you've been getting up to, what you've been doing, send us a picture, let us know um, you know, where you are, what you've been doing, what you've been making, put a little bit of text in, and <clears throat> hopefully during the show today, I can show your picture on the screen to everyone, which is what I will do right now, in fact. So um, these are a few pictures that were sent in over the course of the week since I did my last video on Saturday. Um, let's see. So this one here, oh, I did have a name on that one, but I must have put the wrong image up. So I can't quite see. Oh, Aggie. Yes, Aggie from Birmingham. She's been doing lots of beading. And that one there in the middle is that dancing cubes, which is what I did on Saturday. So clearly she's been watching my videos and making. Thanks very much to Aggie for that one. Uh, we've also got Caroline in Devon, who I know she's watching. She already said hello. She's had a go at making the um, uh, that little bicone cuff that I made. Uh, the, the the crystal and gemstone cuff that I made last Wednesday, was it? A whole week ago. Wow. Um, so, yeah, she's made that one. My first attempt at wire work. Not perfect, but as I'm a bead weaver, I'm happy. I didn't have enough rondelles, so I used bicones instead. Well, I think that looks fantastic. That looks great, Caroline. Thank you for sending in that picture. Um, let's see. Um, Colleen as well. One is with peach seed beads and the other is a multicolor blend of red, blue, green and purple. Now I'll check out your other tutorials. So that one looks like uh, that's our dancing cubes that I did just on Saturday, just gone. So I do have a few others as well. Yep. Sharon in Buffalo, New York. So we're even getting pictures from people overseas too. Thank you, uh, everyone who sent in your pictures. I made these two bracelets with what was in my stash. Thank you for all the help and ideas. So thank you very much, Sharon, for watching. I think that's everything for now. I will show more a bit later on. Um, but yeah, um, let's see. We've got even more people coming on. Um, <clears throat> we've got June here. Uh, she's 
just come up. She's using her husband's laptop, so it's got her granddaughter's uh, name on there. Uh, D, we've got Elizabeth. She's watching as live as well. Thanks, Elizabeth. Um, Ida from Durham. Lots and lots of people have joined in, so that's that's fantastic. Um, so let me just show you this week the honeycomb bracelet it's this one right here this is what i'm going to be making so as i said it has lots of gorgeous six by four crystal beads in there um and i'm going to be using our smooth and slinky cord it is a fantastic bead weaving and not uh, sorry not bead weaving bead knotting and kumihimo cord that you can use it's not waxed so it's very, very high quality. I'll tell you about it more in a minute. But these are the sorts of things that you can make with the honeycomb. Um, in case you missed it last week, I did the dancing cubes bracelet, which was this one just here. We showed, we had a few people send their pictures in. Uh, but you can see it's got those that dancing effect with your cubes. That is what I did um, a few uh, on, on, on Saturday. Um, there's all of those just there. Um, and then what I did and what's coming up next week, which I'll show you in advance, we're doing netting stitch with crystals. So I'm going to get back to a bit of bead weaving again uh, on Saturday, and I'm going to be making, making this uh, both. I'll show you how to do both of those. So one of them is like a, a bangle, and then the other one is like a graduated necklace. So you'll learn how to make both of those uh, in the one, but there's the little bangle just there, which you can see it worn as well. Sorry, I jumped past that a bit quick. So there it is there. You can see the detail of the netting. Um, there is it worn. And then it comes in lots of different colorways. So if you jump onto the link up in the description on our website, you will see just up there that I have the um, a, a little bulk pack sort of bundle where you can get three of those bangles any three you want to choose for 20 pounds so that is fantastic value if you want to have a go at making that that is available at any three for 20 pounds um and then oh there's maxine there working as my model um that is the the graduated necklace as well that i will be showing you how to make on the video as well, which that comes in quite a few colors. And thankfully, lots of them match with the um, colors of bracelets that go with that tutorial as well. So the Hollywood um, and the Calypso, I'll be teaching both of those coming on Saturday. Um, but yeah, definitely, if you want to, head to the links up in the description and you'll be able to see, one, the upcoming shows of what's coming um, on Saturday and I think possibly the video of what's coming on Wednesday is up there too. And then um, you can check out what is what I'm using today, which I'll just pop at the bottom, the materials I'll be using. Um, and then... Uh, as well, we've also got a little link that if you want to subscribe to our videos because you enjoy them and you want to join in and be notified every single time uh, that we do these tutorials, I highly recommend subscribe up to our little newsletter there and then you'll be informed every time uh, I do a tutorial. So anyway, let's get started. As I said, I'm going to be making one of these beautiful honeycomb bracelets just here uh this one um is is essentially the same colorway as what i'm making right now so i'm using five millim uh, five meters you need five meters of 0 0.5 millimeter um uh, smooth and slinky cord and then i've got six by four millimeter crystal beads just here so you might know them as donuts you might know them as rondelles um, you also need a pair of scissors a little tube of super glue anything that you can get for just a pound will do a ruler is pretty useful and then what i'm using today as well which i do not have very many in stock at all so if you want to get one be very, very quick because they will disappear before the end of the show, I'm sure, is this macrame board just here, which is 
Uh, see this little fella just here? It's essentially a foam board and it holds everything in place. If you don't have one of these, you can obviously pin it to your mat or tablecloth or whatever it is that you want. But these macrame boards are fantastic for helping you keep a really firm tension when you're doing your work. Um, so anyway, I'll just show you as well the smooth and slinky cord that I'll be using, which is this one just here. Um, it is a polyester core through the center, which gives it lots and lots of strength. And then a uh, woven around it, wrapped, is five strands of rayon, which is a man-made silk, which makes it feel absolutely so soft and delicious it's fantastic it's one of my when it comes to knotting and kumihimo and doing macrame it is absolutely my favorite material to use because it's not waxed you can bend it and do whatever you want and it doesn't kink it just comes straight back to where it was it knots beautifully which i'll show you just here at the bottom i've literally just tied knots at the bottom just here and i haven't even glued them but they are holding really, really well and staying together beautifully, but would come undone if I needed them to really easily. Um, another fantastic thing about this particular cord, which I'll just show you very quickly, we have two bulk packs which are available on our website as well, which there's um, like a, a dark set, which has a purple, a really nice red, there's a sand color, an olive, and then sort of a greeny color as well. And then you've got like a, a, a brighter, summerier version, which, sorry, I should have taken this out of the bag so that we could see it better. But anyway, it's got like a really nice coral color. There's a fantastic light blue there, um, a pale purple, a nice couple of greeny creams as well. Lots of different things in there. Um, so, um, yeah, one last thing that I'll tell you before I get started is also a little tip I recommend for getting your beads onto your thread here. So what you do, cut yourself, because this is essentially step one of the tutorial, you need to cut yourself three lengths of thread, uh, smooth and slinky cord here. I'm using a half mil so that my beads will thread onto it. Uh, three lengths, about 40 centimeters each. So I think that's probably somewhere about 16, 16 inches or so, something like that. Um, but yeah, you need three strands of that, about 40 centimeters worth. And then what I do, which makes this, which is another great thing about this cord, makes the whole process so easy, is I've just got my super glue just here. And what I did with it was painted the end see that final little inch there of my thread with super glue so that it's rock solid like a needle and then that way when it comes to threading on beads it's super super easy to get them on and off i'll even show you an example of one i don't need this bead because i pre-threaded mine but because it's nice and firm you can even just sort of cut the edge into a bit of a point if you want to and then it just threads straight through the beads really really easily so that you can not have to sort of fiddle with them trying to get them into your thread so anyway as i said first thing you need to do three lengths of cord each one about 40 centimeters and then you need two more lengths of cord which we're going to use to do our knotting with that are going to be um about a meter and a half um kelly asks could you use clear nail polish Yes, you can use clear nail polish, but it doesn't quite go as firm and as stiff as the um, as the super glue does. But great question. That is one that people do ask very, very often. Um, but yeah, you can use super glue, but I uh, definitely much prefer using. Uh, sorry, you can use nail varnish, but I much prefer the super glue. Um, good morning to Sharon, by the way, and Kelly. I've, I haven't said hello to you. Thanks for joining. And then Linda, she's also said hi to everyone as well. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, uh, and Monica as well. Good evening, friends, she says. Whereabouts are you, Monica? Where are you joining us from? So anyway, I've got my uh, two pieces just here that are about a meter and a half long. 
I've done mine um, a little bit shorter because I don't need quite as much just for my demonstration today, but you need three that are 40 centimeters and one that's about a meter and a half. So I'll just show you real quick what we're going to do. You take it underneath, oh, one second. This is another great thing about the macrame board. See how it's a little bit loose right now? Because it's got these foam edges, I'll just pull it tight from underneath and then boom look how nice and tense that is isn't that nice anyway so I'll just show you real quick what we're gonna do I'll get both of these threads and take them underneath here under my three threads just here so there we go just slide that under and pull nice and tight uh, whoops almost went too far uh, there we go find the middle it's important that you're as close to the middle as you can get of this thread it doesn't need to be in the middle of this the middle of your your long thread is what you need to find and tie just a normal knot like you would starting your shoelaces left over right style um, to to bring them together so that they are in the center so that's around about my center because i want to have an equal amount of working space on the left and an equal amount on the right. So just left hand, left over right. And then if you can try and bring it as close as you can to the center. So it comes together, check that your ends, that your lengths are about the same on both sides. In fact, I might even put my finger in the middle once I find it. Uh, here we go, just get that nice there put my finger inside the knot this is a good trick to find the middle and then once you pull then there we go now I've got the middle nice and close and easy to access and then I'll just pull that nice and tight so that it is firmly on my threads you want to tie this knot around about 10 centimeters from the end where you put crystals so once you thread on your crystals tie little knots I should have mentioned this at the beginning uh, tie little knots thread on as many crystals as you need so for the most part I think on the left thread you'll want to have 14 beads um, plus oh sorry 15 beads if you include these the middle one will have 14 so one bead less and then the one on the right here again it's the same as this one so 15 beads on this one so 14 uh, sorry 15 14 15 like that so I'll just pull that nice and tight so that my thread is super duper firm there and I'm ready to start making some square knots, macrame square knots. That's how we start this thing off. So if I just show you on the edge here, I'm going to be making, let's zoom in a little, shall we, and have a quicker look. There we go. So I'm making this section just here. So this is with flat square knots. Um, that's what we're about to make now. Um, by the way, everyone, let me know where you're from. I want to know whereabouts everyone is. We've got uh, people from South Africa and Holland. Uh, Monica is in Malaysia. She's just let me know. Kelly, I know, is in Australia. She's down in uh, Vic uh, Victoria. Uh, but lots of people joining in from all over the world. I want to know where you are as well. Um, even if it is just in the UK, let me know. Um, first things first, though, I think it's time for a sip of my tea. I always forget it. Not today. I say that, but I'm sure I will. Anyway, so I'll just show you on the instructions. Let's just see. So like I said, first thing that you want to do, you tie your little beads to the end there, put them into your macrame board or pin them to a mat. Doesn't matter if you don't have a macrame board. It's not a problem tie them onto the thread like this nicely in the center and then what we're going to do is start creating our first square knot so I'll just show you the pictures first and then I'll do it so first we make this D shape over the top of our three threads then I take the other side and I'll lay it over the top of the tail of that thread that I made the D with then with that same tail I'm going to go through the loop of the D underneath those three threads and then repeat on the other side. So I'll make the D on the other side and then over the top and through the loop on both sides. So let me just show you that in the flesh now. So I've got my two threads here. In fact, I'll just zoom out a little for this one so that we can see. Uh, Kimberly's in Illinois. Fantastic. 
Um, how close to Chicago are you? I once went there as a child, just briefly, as part of a, an air uh, a flight stopover. I want to go back and spend more time there. And we got people in Wisconsin as well. So many people are joining us from so many places. That's fantastic. So anyway, I've created this little D shape just here. That's what I need to do with this first side. Then with the other side, I'm going to bring it over the top, just like in my pictures, which in fact, I'll put them in the top corner here so that you can see. Um, here we are. So they're up here in this top corner. So I made that D shape. Then I'm going to lay this second thread over the top of these threads here. And then finally, I'll bring the tail up through the bottom. So here is my thread here. Take the tail underneath all three of these threads inside this loop and then pull it up through the loop just there so as i pull that nice and tight you can see that creates the first half of our very first macrame square knot that's the easiest most simple form of um, square knot that you can make that's the first half um, now the second one to make sure it stays flat, like I showed you in uh, on that picture just there, which let me just put that back into focus. To keep it flat, you need to do the same again, but on the opposite side. Otherwise, you get this sort of spiraling effect, which you can do that if you want to. If you want a creating a spiring, spiraling effect, you just keep doing the D on the same side again and again and again. But to get that flat, beautiful flat looking finish, you do the D on the opposite side each time. So now this time I did my D on this side last time. Now this time I'll do my D over on this side. Let's move that little instruction out the way so that we can see. There we go. There's my D. Take this one over the top of this thread and then underneath all three of these threads just here. So pulling that one nice and tight and then that will create the second side of our square knot there. So just pull each thread individually one by one and then all four together. And then we can just continue along. Let me just re-tighten my threads a little with my macrame board here. And then now let's continue on. So um, let me know everyone, what have you guys been getting up to? What have you been doing? By the way, if you'd be so kind, I'd love it if you would like the post to share it. Um, let people, you know, if you're wherever you're watching it, if you're on Facebook, share it with your with your friends or maybe even on a bead group. If you are part of any bead groups, I'd love it if you'd share my video on there just so we can show lots and lots of people. Um, and I will do a few more of these little macrame knots. But yeah, anyone who is uh, willing to share, I would absolutely love that and I would really appreciate it. By the way, don't forget, if you've only just joined us, your pictures can be in the show. Just send us a little picture of what you've been making, what you've been doing to live at beadspider.co.uk and I will try and get you featured on the show. So anyway... Um, I'll just show you a little trick just here to help you know which side you need to do next. There's a there's a bit of a trick to it when you're doing your square knots. You go, oh, which one do I need to do next? I can't remember if I did the left side next or the right side. So I'll just show you a quick little trick when I zoom in nice and close. It's about as close as I can get. Uh, maybe I can go even further. Wow, this program's so good. Um, so anyway. Oh, thanks, Natalie, for sharing. I appreciate it very much. Oh, and Sharon, she's uh, shared as well, I think. Um, so as you can see here, see how it creates these little loops on the top just there? When it comes to if you, you know, leave it and then you come back to it and you can't remember um, uh, where, where you were up to, see these little loops on the top? that gives you a clue on where you need to do your next D. So if the loop is on this side, it means you need to do your D on this side. If your loop is on that side, it means you need to do the D on that side. So I'll just do one really close so that you uh, will see the change. Um, I'll just do myself, I've made my D on this side, I'm going over the top of it and then under and back inside of that D, just as before. 
just the same. And then as you pull it tight, you'll see there's a loop on this side, which means it's time to do the D on the opposite side. So see, you can almost see it a bit bigger just there. It's about to tighten and create a really neat little loop there. There we go. So there's the loop and you can see from that, I need to do my next loop on this side here. Sharon says she's just finished the jazz, but she's not taken a picture yet. Don't worry, Sharon, if you don't man manage to get it sent uh, in time for today, definitely do send it along though, so that I can show it maybe on Saturday. Um, but yeah, I'll do a few more knots. You don't need to do too many on this. You can do, it depends, it's, it's up to your own personal preference how long you want this section to be. But essentially, I think, um, let's see how much I did on the previous one. There we go. So that's pretty much about the right sort of length. I could do one or two more knots if I wanted to, but I don't think I will. Um, so once you get to this point, make sure you remember how many knots you did. So if you, you can tell that by counting how many loops you've got. So I've got one loop there, two, three, four, five, six little loops. So that's how I know I need to do six when I get to the other end. So it doesn't matter if you can't quite remember that right now, but when we get to the other end, we'll try and make a piece that's exactly the same as that. So let me just zoom out and I'll show you real quick what we're going to be doing next. So essentially what I'll be doing is adding on the start of my little crystal features. So the first thing, this is why we have extra beads on the outside, is because we start with two here. It looks much, much better if you start with the two outer ones. You can start with the middle one, but it doesn't quite look as good. Elizabeth says, this looks great. Thanks. Uh, you'll have to have a go. You'll have to give it a try. Um, but yeah, so. First things first, actually, I'm a bit too far zoomed out. Let's go a little bit closer. There we go. So what I'm going to do, first things first, I'm going to thread up my little bead just here. So I think I've got a good picture in my instructions. Let's have a look and see if I can explain to you exactly what I'm about to do. So what you need to do, first things first, you slide up a bead and then see how there's only one thread on the left so far. Essentially, what we'll do is bring one of our threads out of the way and we'll come back and use that a bit. I'm going to be making what's called a half hitch knot to lock that bead perfectly into place. And then I'm going to create a nice square knot, just the same as before, around that bead. Then I'll repeat the same with the opposite side. So I'll just show you it in real life because I think that's a bit better than the uh, than the instructions today. I might not show you the instructions too much because I think it's just a bit easier to see it in the flesh. So first thing we need to do, you can see I've got two threads here, one at the bottom, one at the top. What I need to do first is take that. Oh, yep. Sharon, sip of tea first. Great idea. Sip of tea. Maybe this is the only way I'll actually get through my tea is if people keep continuously reminding me. So anyway, the bottom thread, I'm not going to be working with that one yet. So I'm going to move it out the way, all the way over here, and just stick it into one of these little edge pieces on the side. It's not important right now. It doesn't need to be tight or anything. I'm just trying to get it a bit out of the way so that I can work with it a bit later and it's not going to be in my way now. Um, so with it chilling out over here, in fact, maybe I'll put it up a bit higher so it's a bit further out of the way. There we go. That will do. Keep it chilling over there. You slide this bead up and then what I'll do is create, I'll use this thread, which is the upper of the two, to create a half hitch knot um, over, um, over the, around this little crystal here. So the thread goes around here over the top. I'm only working with this thread at the moment. So you can ignore these two threads. I only need to worry about this one. So again, you sort of create that same little D shape, but this time I'm only using one thread and instead I still use the same thread and I take that one over the top and then underneath this gap so that 
it creates, let's have a little look, try and do it like this so that we can see it nice and neat, this sort of a shape. So the thread goes over the top and then underneath and then back inside this loop that we've just created. So when we do that, as it tightens, it just locks that little bead nicely into place. So you can pull it, your threads in opposite direction. So you pull this one down, you pull this one up and it will lock everything perfectly into place right there. So that's step number one for locking this first bead in place. Now I'll pick up my other side thread, this one just here that we ignored for a bit. And what I'm gonna do now is create, again, just on this thread, two square knots to lock it in place. It's important that you do this side first, so the outer side from the crystal, because that's going to create a little edging loop around this crystal. So I'll just zoom in to show you if I can. Um, there we go. And if you have a little look, see how there's a little loop of thread around here? I wanna create another loop around this side so that my little, if we look at the final design, See how the little crystals are housed inside to give it that honeycomb shape? That's what I'm about to create now. So how I'll do that, just zoom out a little, I'm going to create two little flat square knots on this piece just here. So um, let's just have a little look. I've got myself a little D shape with this first thread. And then let's move it up a touch and then I'll go over the top, so just the same as we were doing before, over the top, and then this thread will take underneath, again, we're only worrying about this thread here, not the other two, ignore them, and then pull it up, and then this will create the first of our square knots, locking that little bead perfectly into place. Look at that, isn't that neat? Now what I need to do, again, you can see I've got my little loop just on the edge. So that means now the D needs to be on this side. So I'll just take the little D over the top on this side, bring this thread over the top there, and then forget these two threads, forget these two, and then underneath just this one here, and then finally we'll just lock it in place like that. There we go. And that's that very first bead locked in and done. So now I don't need to worry about these threads for a minute. I'll uh, pop this one right out the way and I'll keep this one sort of aside for now. And we do exactly the same with this opposite side. So now let's just slide a bead into position and I'll zoom in a little bit closer just so that it's, you can see exactly what's going on. Um, there we go. And again, like I said, the top thread, so if you have a look, see how there's two threads, one at the top, one at the bottom. The bottom one will take out of the way. We don't need that yet. And then the top thread, we're going to create that half hitch with. So I'll just get this thread nice and tight. We can forget about these two threads on the left now. We're only gonna do with this one here. So the upper thread goes over the top of this thread just here, and then back and underneath so that it's, when it pulls nice and tight, it creates this sort of a little loop shape. So see how it's, it's above this thread here. There we go, that makes it easier to see, doesn't it? And then as I do that, I can just pull on this little thread downwards and pull this thread upwards and then pop, it just locks it perfectly in place like that. Now, as I said, oh, Sharon, Kelly, tea time. Thank you, thank you for the reminder. I'm taking big gulps so I don't forget. Uh, yeah, so as you can see, this cord is absolutely fantastic for doing your knotting with, but, which is great, if you undo it a little, uh, if you've got any problems, you can easily undo it, it doesn't matter, and you can see my thread is still just as good as ever. It doesn't kink or go weird. You don't get any funny kinky marks or anything like that. Um, it stays perfectly as good as it was 
uh, as always. So I'll just retighten that now, and that locks that in place. Now I will bring my thread back in, like so. So this one is the one that was at the bottom. It's now going to come around this side. So ignore these two threads here. Just get them out of the way. This is one thread here. Get that nice and tight. And then I need to create my square knot, my, uh, square knots on this side here. So let's just give it a bit more space so you can see what I'm doing a bit better. And now over the top on this side first, very important. Then over the top here and then bring that one from the same direction underneath the cross there and up through the D shape that we made so it's always the same and then what you'll see what happens is as you pull that nice and tight you can just pop your bead inside there and pull 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 and lo and behold Ta-da! There we go. Sits beautifully inside there. Look at that. Isn't that nice? So that all comes together perfectly, just like that. I need to do one more square knot on this side. So again, I'll just keep these out of the way. I can see my little loop just here, which if I zoom right in, hopefully we can see it. Pop it there. So see that little loop just there? That means I did my macrame knot on that side. So it means this is the side I need to do the D on, just in case I forgot. So let's just zoom back out again. I'll just pop on the screen what the materials are I'm using as well, just in case um, you need to know. I'm using half mil smooth and slinky cord, which you can get from our website. Don't forget the bulk pack is the best value way to get it for sure. And you get lots of colors as well. You get six colors in there, which one of these little um, spools that you get in here is enough for one bracelet. And if you want to get yourself some of our six by four um, crystals, such as these ones just here. One strand is enough for two, two bracelets in the one strand. So definitely head to the link up in the description if you fancy having a go at this, because I've got everything that you need in there, except for super glue, because we don't sell that, plus you can't really ship it anyway. Um, but you can just get that any old convenience store that might be near your house or something. Um, so let's just zoom back out a bit more so we can see what I'm doing. And then over the t make the D on this side and again lock it in to place and get it nice and tight there we go now that's the two pieces on the outside done now it's time to do the middle so I'll just pull these two a little tighter pop that there pull this one so it's nice and tight again as well and then I'll thread up the first middle bead just here. There we go. And now essentially what I'm going to do is create two little square knots underneath this central bead. So how easy is that? I can, it doesn't matter which side you choose first, but working only with this thread, we're ignoring the two outer threads now. We don't need to worry about these two, only this one. I'll create the D on this side first. Then I will Take this other one. So we're only working with the two threads that are in the center. So there's my D shape. Underneath there, only through the middle, only the middle one. So ignore these two threads here. And I'm only making my square knot around this middle thread. See that? So there's one. And now do the opposite side, so the D now is on this side, over the top again, and underneath that little spot just there. Now, don't forget, if you want to get a, uh, a macrame board, I have very few in stock. So make sure you go and get one as soon as possible because they will run out probably before the end of the show and then I'm not going to have any more. So you'll have to just either get them elsewhere or pin them to your to your mat, which works just as fine. Uh, but yeah, the macrame boards definitely do make it easy when you're trying to do macrame. So anyway, that essentially brings us back now to where we were before, which 
works out really easy because we've got our top thread which does the um, half hitch. See how the two threads are sort of back pointing outwards again? That's why we do those square knots in the middle because it pops your threads back to the outside. So um, tea break time. You're right. I don't have too much tea left. I'm actually going to do it today, I think. Hmm. There we go. And now let's slide up the next bead. So essentially, we're just going to repeat this process now um, for for making a few more. So I'll just blast through a few more rows. Uh, I'll go through the whole process once more, and then I'll just make a few, and we can discuss things. So if you've got questions, great time to ask them, because, oops, sorry about that, because I'll be able to answer all of your questions in just a moment. So definitely, um, if you've got questions, now's a great time to, to type them in, ask them, put them in, and I will get back to you in just a minute. So I'll just go through this process one last time. We start by doing a half hitch knot with this thread here. Let's zoom out because we don't quite need to be so close for this part. The upper thread we're doing first. We forget about this thread for the minute, so just pop that to the side. Create a half hitch knot, so we make a D, and with the same thread, we go underneath only this first thread, like so, see that? And then up through this D shape. So pull that nice and tight. How's everybody finding today's tutorial? Are we enjoying it? What does everybody think of it so far? Um, you know, give me some feedback. I, I wanna know what you guys think about my, my design, my tutorial, all of these things. Um, but yeah, let's continue on. This was a design made by Jermaine, by the way, before I confuse anyone saying that it was my design. Um, so let's just get that. So I've done my half hitch knot, which locks the bead nicely in place. And now I'll do my square knots to bring that into place. So create the D on this side here. Bring this thread over the top of this one. Underneath the cross, only worrying about this thread. And then up through the D shape, see, through, so this thread's going up through that D, and then as I pull it tight, that will lock that in place. I can just tighten my threads back up if I need to, like so. That's the first one, and then we'll do a second square knot to lock that in place as well. So then, oops, just pull it nice and tight, there we go. And then again, make a D, under the cross and through the loop just there did i do that right yeah i think so good perfect there we are and that locks this one in oh good lots of people are saying that they are enjoying it um Oh yeah, well Kelly, you're more than welcome to grab, I think we might have a black cord on the website and we definitely have rainbow beads like uh, these ones here. Look how sparkly these rainbow beads are. This is um, on the, the product page. If you head to the link in the description, um, which, wait a minute, uh, here we go. I'll just put some text at the bottom there. Um, we've got a sale on, by the way, of this kit until the 4th. Uh, but yeah, if you wanna get one, um, each of the kits makes two, two uh, bracelets in the one little set there. So anyway, I've done this left side. Let's get back to the right side. So again, I can ignore this lower of the two threads. So see, one's at the bottom, one's at the top. Ignore the lower one. Slide this up to the top. Are you guys sending in your pictures, by the way? Um, I want to see, Mercer says, love both the design and the tutorial. Thank you very much, Mercer. Um, don't forget, by the way, um, you can get the instruction paperwork. Oh, it's a bit bright there. Wait, let's just turn down the brightness for a second. There we go. You can get this instruction, which has all the pictures and the text on there. Um, that's also on sale on the website too, which if I have a quick look, I'll just show you. Oh, Evelyn Johnson, what size are the beads again, please? I am using 0 0.5 millimeter thread and six by four crystal beads. So because they're sort of that donut rondelle shape, it gives you a really nice sort of shape when you make it together. You can use round beads, but I'm using six by four crystals. But let me just show you on the website real quick um, the page. So if you want to get the pattern for this, um, enjoying the tutorial, 
Um, it's just here. It's only two pounds. So it's really, really inexpensive. And it will show you how to make this process and also how to do the sliding knot clasp. So don't forget, stick around because I'm going to show you how to finish this, this piece off and how to do the sliding knot clasp. I've got um, various different kits here, which is five different options for you to choose from uh, just here. Here are some of those six by four crystal donuts or rondelles. We do have a lot more though. So you can look on our website um, in the crystal section for our crystal donuts. Um, see this, those rainbow ones right there that you were talking about. There's a nice electric blue. Here is our slinky bulk pack. So you can see this one here is um, the summer sun, which has all those lovely summer light colors. And then our dusk delight has the darker ones. The macrame board is still in stock briefly. Um, so if you want one, it's right there still in stock. So don't forget about that. And then we do have individual colors of our half mil slinky, which um, if you want to find that in the menu, it's in the stringing and wire section. And then if you go to thread and cords, that's where you'll find all of our smooth and slinky cord in there. So it's the round slinky cord that you want to find. And then there you go. You can see we've got lots and lots of different slinky, but make sure if you want to do today's design, you do the half mil slinky cord. And then one last thing that I'll show you before I get back to the tutorial is if you head to, there's a link up in the description, which says, if you want to see upcoming shows, click here. If you click that, it will take you to this page. On there, you can see the, um, this is the page for what I'm doing today. Here's what I did on Saturday. This is last Wednesday and back. So Kumahimo, Crimpable Chain. These are all the things that I've done in previous shows. This one's really popular. Um, and then what's coming up. This is going to be on Saturday, the netted crystal. So if you click on that, it will take you to the page where one, you can get the pattern, which this one's three pounds. This one's also three pounds. And you can get any three for 20 pounds on our um, Hollywood bracelets. So there's all the different colors that we have. And then of course, we've got bead bundles on here. We've got the Calypso necklace, if you prefer the necklace. And then down here, we've got seed beads. We've got, oh, there's other beads that are meant to be in there, but this is uh, a great um, little thing. These are the Aurora crystal beads, which I'm really excited to show you those. So if you haven't seen those before, four mil Aurora crystals, they look like bubbles, I love them. And then uh, coming next Wednesday, just real quick, I'll just show you before I get back to the tutorial. Just here, um, the dagger bead designs. So I'm going to be working with dagger beads, but we have a booklet, which it's just here. Usually it's 750, it's down to just 550 if you wanna get it. Um, you don't have to pay any postage if you're getting our downloads. Uh, they just come emailed digitally straight to you. And then on there, this will show you how to make little dagger flowers, which you can see one there. There's, uh, oh, I just covering it, but just in the bottom there, there's um, little dragonflies as well. There's also a dragonfly necklace. And uh, just in the back, there's a couple of different necklace designs. So I think there's about seven different things that you learn in that one little tutorial just there uh, in the one booklet. But that's what's going to be next Wednesday. So um, definitely um, have a look at that if you if you want to um, be involved with what's coming up in the next week or so in shows. So uh, now that we're back over here with me, let me just pop this out the way. And now I'll just continue on with this little crystal on the other side now. So just as we were, we do our half hitch, just like that over there. And then, ah, Gwyn, good morning from Lynchburg, Virginia. I received my order and the crystals are beautiful. I'm really glad about that. Now, just like Gwyn, if you're in the US, not in the, UA, the UK like me, and you want to order, uh, we do a flat rate on postage if you're in North America. So in the US or Canada, it's £6.50 flat rate for postage. If you're in Europe, it's £6 flat rate for postage. Doesn't matter how big you uh, make your order, you'll get... Um, you'll get it sent for just six fifty. Um, doesn't even matter. Um, even if it was a massive order, which we had one the other day, um, 
you'll still only pay 650 for your postage. Um, and if you're in the UK, definitely, well, even if you're not in the UK, it's worthwhile, become a member on our website because one, if you've downloaded, uh, if you've ordered any of our downloads, be paid or free ones, because we have lots of free patterns as well. Um, if you want to access your downloads again in future, if you are a member on our website, we have a little section in your My Account page, which takes you to where um, you will get access to your downloads anytime. So even if it's six years from now, you can come back, log into your account, and any of the patterns that you purchased, you'll be able to access them uh, right away. Oops, I almost used the wrong thread just there. Uh, you'll be able to access them right away and download them again, even all these um, years later if you wanted to. But definitely the main reason if you're in the UK to sign up and become a member is because you will get free postage as long as you're spending over £10. So um, that's the a deal that we do. We don't care uh, how many times you order, you'll get free postage every time as long as you're spending £10 and you're in the UK. Um, yes, Fia Zara, maybe? Uh, hi, I'm a big fan. I love your tutorials. Thank you very much. Don't forget, guys, share, share my little tutorial. Um, and Kelly's just reminded me to finish my tea. I'm going to actually do it today. Look at that. The first time I actually finished my tea. Unfortunately, the last sip was cold. Doesn't matter. Uh, Evelyn, just placed an order. Fantastic. Out of interest, Evelyn, did you get one of the macrame boards? Uh, there's not going to be many left if you did. Um, so I've done my two edges. Let's do the middle again. We just do a square knot in the center. So first, I'll do the D on one side. We're only working with this middle thread. Does anyone have any questions, by the way? Uh, I want to know if you have any questions, what do you want to know? I am right here at your disposal, ready and listening, wanting to answer those for you. By the way, if you do this knot here, just a little tip, if you do it a bit tight, you'll find it sort of makes your, I'll show you, just zoom it in so that you'll see it. Here we go. If you pull this, this knot a little too tight, it makes your bracelet go a bit smushed. See like that? So if you just keep it a little looser when you do this one just here, um, it will just make it sit that little bit better. So that's a really good little tip just there for making sure you don't over tighten this, this middle thread in the center just here. So uh, now let's continue on. Do my D on the other side now. Ooh, let's zoom back out so you can actually see what I'm doing. Ooh, I've moved over a little. There we go. Uh, and then over the top, under, and then just, oops, I've got the wrong thread. Have I done that again? I keep getting the wrong threads. I need to be pinning my threads down so that I don't mess them up. It's another good thing about the macrame board is if you need to get a thread out the way, you just pin it into one of the edges and then you can't possibly mix it up. So uh, here we go. Um, Here we go. And tighten that. And there we go. Risa Renee, hello, hello. I was watching on YouTube but had to switch to Facebook. By the way, I got sent a very funny picture the other day. I should have put it on so I could show you guys. I was sent a photograph because you know how I do these tutorials both on Facebook and on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, I think you can put it onto, you can send the image to your TV screen. So someone sent me a photograph. Oh, I'm trying to remember. Um, but yeah, they sent me a photograph just the other day of my face really, really big on the, uh, um, on the television while they were while they were working, uh, while, while I was doing my tutorial. So they were watching my tutorial with me on the big screen TV and sent me a picture of them making theirs, um, 
making while they were making this so i was sitting on the tv there elizabeth what happens if you use the wrong thread well um, it might look a bit funny. You'll sort of see the thread. The good thing is if you do see that, it's quite easy to just go back and undo your threads to undo your mistakes. See, look, I'll go back and see, look, I'll oh, just imagine I made a mistake here. I can go back and I can undo this thread here. And you can see it's coming apart nice and easily. But once it's it holds its tension as well, really, really well. That's what I really like about this thread is it's so usable and it doesn't kink. Uh, so great question. Gave me a good opportunity to um, to show you how well it comes undone. So let's just half hitch knot on this side here. I'll only do a couple more repetitions and then I'll show you how to finish it off. And then don't forget, definitely, definitely stick around because I'm going to show you how to do that sliding knot class. Uh, Risa Renee, what thread is this? This is our smooth and slinky cord. So it's got a polyester core through the center, which is really, really strong, uh, gives it the strength. And then it has a um, five strands of rayon woven around the outside um, of it so that it will... Um, feel ultra soft and just delicious when you're wearing it it's just so comfortable to use and wear um but yeah if you want to have a look on the website it's called smooth and slinky cord i'm using the 0 0.5 millimeter thickness and that has a product code i believe ss five which is smooth and slinky and then five for the half mil and then uh, if you type that in, it should show you, or SS50, it will show you all the different colors we have, because I think we've got about 15, maybe 20 colors in stock at the moment. And then definitely the, the Slinky Bolt Pack is uh, the best value because you get so many colors. Um, so let's do the other side once more. Let's just slide that up, do my half hitch knot like that around here, one half hitch knot, pull that up. Pull up, 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 nice and tight. Do the right macrame knot on this side. It, are people sending in their pictures, by the way? Don't forget um, to send in your pictures. And I'll just pop it at the bottom here. Uh, if you want to know when we do free tutorials, just head to the link in the description and subscribe to our newsletter. Um, that's the best way to find out what we're doing and when. Um, plus, if you want to know the upcoming shows, um that link is also up there and actually now that i think about it um ah risa renee i sent in a pic and she shared so thank you very much uh to you um and don't forget if you want to find this slinky cord um if you go to the link up in the description um that says honeycomb bracelet it will take you straight to the spot where you need to um find all the products so the pattern there's kits and you can get um, the slinky cord or the bulk packs. They're all available there. Um, so yeah, let's now work on the middle. I've slid my middle bead up. You can see it's coming together really nicely, isn't it? Um, can this be done with embroidery too? I have a feeling it can. I'm pretty sure I've seen, it's like a, a technique that they use in, in like lace making quite often. I'm fairly sure that you can. I can't be certain though. It's not quite my area of expertise. Um, and, um, but yeah, uh, I believe I have seen it. It's, um, you know, on, on like lace making and, and embroidery, uh, those sorts of things. I have a feeling you can, um, but yeah, so I'll just do one last iteration. Now I'll show you how to finish off and do the opposite side. So let me just get my threads nice and tight, both ends, pull this end up type two and then i'll get on to showing you how to do um the the opposite side so when it comes to finishing off what you need to do you need to finish with two crystals so we want it to be symmetrical um on both ends so i'm going to finish with two outer ones and then i'll join them together so last time um Oh, okay. Apparently, it's not a lace making technique. I thought I'd seen it before, but maybe I'm wrong. Um, but there. So uh, let's just finish this off. So again, one last time, half hitch knot there. Um, 
underneath, do that half hitch knot, pull it up, and then I'll do my square knots. One. Like there. And then I'll do the other one over the top. There we go. And now I'll do the same with the other side. So get this thread out the way. Whoops, too many beads. Slide that up. Get nice and flat. Do one more. How's everybody doing today, by the way? How's, um, you know, how's the weather where you are? It's not too bad here. It's sort of overcast, but it's warm. Not quite sunny, but somewhere in the middle. Um, what about where you are? How's things where you are? <clears throat> so, uh, let's just do the last one here. So I'll do the D on the right. Because you always need to do the D on the middle side first. Then over the top, under that little cross, pull it up nice and tight. Get that locked in place. And then same on the other side, over the top and locked in. There we go. Uh, and then pull that one tight and there we have it. So let's just pretend that this is the full length of your bracelet. So you would essentially do this until you've got your your full size like that. Just imagine that's where I'm up to. And now what we're going to do, we join these threads together more or less. So just like this, essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my left side weaving threads together, doesn't matter, and I'll bring my right weaving threads together. And what I'm going to do is use these to start creating more square knots. So essentially, I'm going to just bring it back to what I did at this top end here. Let's just bring it down a little. So I'm going to just more or less repeat that. So I've got my left side, my right side. And what I'm going to do, uh, lots of people letting me know. Sun has come out in Dartford. It's overcast in London. Um, Sharon. I think that's how you say your name. Hot in capital letters in Wisconsin. I wish it was hot here. Um, and Sharon, it's a mixture here too, it seems, Oxfordshire. Uh, but yeah, um, I, uh, I, I quite like it when it's lovely and sunny, but today is not that day for me. But um, it's good for my, my growing of my, uh, of my, my strawberries and things though, because I get a little bit of rain. Um, so anyway, I've got my two threads either side, one on the left, one on the right. And now what we're going to do, now make sure you stick around because I'm going to show you how to do the, the sliding knot clasp in a second. But first, I'm going to just repeat this so it matches on the opposite side. So over the top, create a D with two threads now. So bring both of these threads together. And using both of these three threads together, I'll go over the top. Doesn't matter if it's a little bit messy at the beginning, it'll neaten up in a second. Go over the top and then again under all three of them. So I'll just move my threads so they're a little bit closer together on my mat here so that it works a bit neater. And then, like I said, I'll bring, wait, sorry. So it looks a little bit messy, but don't worry. It's gonna come together in a second. Over the top, under all three threads again, because I'm working with all three threads. Underneath, there, like so. And then as I pull that nice and tight, you'll see it creates a little square knot that just pulls everything neatly back in together like so and makes the two sides match. There we go. How's that looking? What do we think? Perfection. I'm happy with that. So that's just pull that a little neater, pull that one a bit tighter. Pull each one individually until it's nice and firm. There we go. So now I can see I've got a little loop on this side. If I zoomed in, you'd see it, but anyway. Um, so I'll do my D on this side now. 
See how much neater it is now that the first knot's done? The first knot's a bit higgledy-piggledy, but then and after it's much better. So under all three, pull it tight. And then don't forget, we need to do same as we did this time. So if you missed it at the beginning, I did six knots. I'll do six again just to make sure it's exactly the same. So that's two there. Pull, pull, pull. Do the D on this side. Over the top. Under all three. Just as before. Morning, Tina. Thanks for joining. Um, by the way, if you've missed this tutorial, you will be able to watch it on demand afterwards. So um, if you've missed it, just um, let us know in the comments. Just type the word subscribe. And when once this video is online and available to watch on demand, if you missed the beginning and you want to rewind, um, just type subscribe and I'll send you the link after the show so that you can go and watch it whenever you're whenever you're ready. Um, and then you'll be able to rewind, fast forward, put me into slow motion if you want to. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's uh, just type the word subscribe and I'll send you a link after. Um, now, uh, one, two, three knots have done. Let's do a fourth knot now or have I done five I've done five knots um then we'll do a sixth here is it is this the fifth or the sixth I can't remember doesn't matter there we go pull how's that looking one two three four five six one two three four five one more will do over the top and under and now what we're going to do, I'm not going to do it because, um, you know, I don't want to be mucking around. Oh, I did the D on the wrong side. Good. That's something I should, I'm glad I did that just so that I can show you what happens if you make that mistake. So if you accidentally do the loop on the wrong side, you sort of start to create this wonky effect and your thread's sticking upwards. The way that you can tell if you've done that, so see how I had a loop there? I haven't created a loop on this side. The loop is on that same side again, but it's underneath. If you do that, which I did just then because I put the D, I did the D on the same side twice, you can just undo your little thread and start it again. So just undo it. And if you make that mistake, it's nice and easy. You just undo it and make sure the loop is on this side. So do the D on this side. So I'll put my D on this side here so you can hopefully see it. Let's just move it up. There we go. You go over the top, under those three just there. Pull, pull, pull. There we go. And that gets that nice and firm. So what you can do now that I recommend, maybe I'll do one extra knot just because then the sizes will be exactly the same. Uh, again, the loops on this side. So I need to do the D on this side over the top. And then to finish this bit off, what you would do is just get your super glue. Because this is a woven cord, the glue just soaks straight in. And you just get your glue and go glue, 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 glue. Turn it over, glue the back nice and glue, glue, glued. And then that way it will go rock solid, nice and firm, stuck together. And then all you have to do is just cut off your little threads um, at the edge there. So if I show you on one that I did before, so you can see it's not, I didn't quite cut it close enough, but essentially it's coming out of that little loop it's rock solid from the glue and then you just trim that little bit there and then trim that little bit there um, as close as you can and that will get that done so anyway now i'm going to show you how to make that fantastic sliding knot clasp this is a really really useful technique for whenever you're working with cords. So if you're doing macrame, whether or not it's a bracelet or a necklace, it doesn't even matter. It's a fantastic technique for making jewelry that will slide um, on and off and is an adjustable size. So I've got a few too many crystals on here still. I'll just take some off. You need to have one left on each thread. That's very important. So there we go. 
And if I take it out of my little macrame board here, we don't need these threads anymore. They're not important. So what I'll do, I'll just sort of measure. It's better if this is a little bit longer. I did this a little bit short, but because I'm just doing a demo piece, I'm never going to wear it. It's not that important. But if you are going to do yours, about 10 centimeters from bead to the first knot is about the size that you want to do. And so I'm going to try and match that essentially. It doesn't matter if it's only approximate to this side here. So my beads, I want to have them around about here, around about there. So what you can do now, you can either use like a needle or a pin if you want to, but essentially you want to try and tie a knot at this little point just here. So literally just a little loop and then pull it nice and tight and get that into position and pull that. And then that stops your bead coming off so again you can glue that little knot and that will definitely secure it forever um, but it's not too important um, but yeah definitely um, tie your little knots in your threads just here so try and keep them as even as you can just move this out of the way so it's a little easier to see so around about this spot here so i'll pinch that pop that there inside the loop and then if you, like I said, if you use like a pin or something, you can hold the pin approximately where you want the knot to be, and it will just tighten to that spot. You can just use your fingers as well if you want to, but, um, you know, if it's not quite in the right spot as well, what's great about this thread, if I just zoom in and show you, here we go, is if it's not quite in the right position, you can sort of just push it back in together, and see, there we go, comes undone again. I can push it down the thread a little, just a little, until it's in the right spot. There we go. And then that, let's just maneuver it a little more further up. There we go. That's pretty good. That'll do. I'm happy with that. And then, whoops, I just went out of shot. Sorry about that. But yeah, I just sort of, I forgot I'd zoomed it in. There you go. That's about where I want it to be. And then I'll just do the third one as well. Maybe I'll make that a little bit longer. Oops. There we go. Slide it down. There we are. And one last one. So, here we go. And slides down. Good, I'm happy with that, that's about right. So what we do now to create that sliding knot clasp, you need to cut yourself one more piece of smooth and slinky cord just now. So you need about 40 or maybe 50 centimeters again. I'd say we'll do 50 centimeters just because it's far better to have too much and cut it off than not having enough. If you don't have enough, you will give yourself a headache, but if you give yourself plenty, it's much, much easier. So err on the side of over giving yourself some rather than under giving yourself enough thread. It's much, much easier if you've got too much thread compared to not enough. So what we do now, move your beads out the way. Just pretend this works much easier if you've glued this, tied in it, uh, wait for your glue to dry and then cut these off before you do this just because then they don't get in the way but anyway let's just bring it around i don't need these bits of thread anymore so let's just cut them as well just get it all nice and neatly into position yeah i'm pretty happy with the lengths there and then i'll just cut these so they're not going to get in my way there we go and what we do now, essentially, is we bring it round into a circle. This would be easier if I had a longer piece here in the middle, but it doesn't matter. Um, so essentially what we do, bring it into a circle like this here. See, this is why you want to have a slightly longer piece, because then you've got more to work with just here. But once you've got all six running one over the top of the, the other, like that, what you do, you take that piece of thread that you just cut, and you go underneath all six. So definitely, like I said, if you've made more, um, if, if this bit is a bit longer, it definitely works better. But um, doesn't matter 
right now I'm only making a small one. No one's going to wear it, so I'll live. Um, so yeah, here we go. So you just take that thread that you made, ignore all this thread, pretend it wouldn't be there because it wouldn't need to be anymore, and then find the middle. And we're just going to right hand over left, tie the two threads together. So one hand over the other, bring it together. And then we want to make sure we do it nicely into the middle of our thread. So bring the two ends together, put your finger where you want the middle of the knot to be. And once you pull that, there we go. There we are. And that's a knot um, right there, nice and firm in position. There we go. So get it nice and tight. Pull this side too. And then what we're going to do now, so it's important, let's zoom in so we can see what I'm doing. It's important when you're making this sliding knot clasp that this knot that you've just made isn't too tight. If you make it too tight, you'll find it doesn't slide. So it's just a little bit looser than, than you would want to, um, to have, essentially. It needs to be nice and loose so that the threads will slide. So I'll just slide it up a little bit this way towards these other crystals. And now what we're going to do is make square knots over the top of all six threads here. So let's just move it up a little so we can see what I'm doing. I'll take one thread and I'll make myself a little D shape. So like I said, this is definitely much easier if you've given yourself extra thread, which I should have done, but it doesn't matter. Over the top there like that. Take the other one over, make a cross like this. And then again, I'm going to go under all six threads. So there we go. And then again, it's important when you do that to not do it too tight. If you do it too tight, it's kind of a, a bit of a um, a bit of a, an art to it that you want to kind of get it not too tight, not too loose. If, you, if it's too loose, the threads won't hold everything in place. If they're too tight, um, they won't slide very easily. So it's kind of a firm but not too firm point that you want to get. So let's do a few more. Just move this up a bit more. Give myself some extra thread. Just here. Oops, where have it gone? There we go. There we are. And now I need to do the D on this side now. So over the top. Cross over. And then under all six threads. So you can see it's curving around. You need to make sure you're under all six of them. Pull that. Oops, sorry, got a bit out of tangle there. Pull that, pull that, pull, 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 pull. Make sure it stays above all of your beads as well. It's important. Oops. I definitely should have left myself extra thread here. Didn't think about that. But yeah, then pull, pull, pull. And there's the second square knot. So if you want to do this, say maybe, yeah, yeah, Elaine, test before pulling too tight. Yes, that is a good idea to do. Um, definitely try and pull your threads before you continue too far just before you continue the next knot, just to make sure that they still slide um, on there. That is also a great tip. So great idea there, Elaine. Um, is there an alternative way to ending macrame threads besides gluing? There is, there are certain knots that you can do, which are really, really firm and sort of don't come undone. I can't remember the name of it offhand, but also some threads you can burn, but I'm not I'm not a big fan of that because you end up with this big black blob on your thread. Or what's even worse is if you overburn and you sort of ruin your thread and the whole thing comes apart. This is why I, I recommend gluing. You don't have to. You don't have to, obviously. But I personally recommend gluing. Um, like if you, if you weave them back in, it works, but, um, like I said, gluing is definitely the easier option, um, in terms of getting a, a really neat, clean finish, uh, in there. Um, plus weaving it in can sort of make it look a bit fat and things like that, which is a little bit unpleasant. Um, but yeah, so then 
if we go over the top, I'll just keep doing a few more knots and then you'll see essentially that we're at a point where it's kind of long enough that you'll get the idea. So just a few more, keep it tight, but not too tight. Here we go. And then essentially you can keep doing this as long as or as short as you want. So for example, if you have a little look, this one that I did previously is fairly short. And then this one is quite a bit longer, isn't it? Look at that, quite a bit longer. So it's entirely up to you how long that you make this little knotted section. Uh, it's not terribly important. Um, it's, it's up to your personal preference, but essentially what works best is if this distance plus this length is um, your your sort of your your wrist width because then it sits really neatly when you've got it on but as i said obviously it doesn't matter too much because um this sort of allows you to have an adjustable size so i'll just do one last knot and then i'll show you how how it works all nice and zoomed in um, one last knot essentially what you'll do then is um Oh, yeah, 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 that's right. That is something that I, I forgot. So when you are doing your last knot, that is a very important bit. Um, when it comes to gluing it, this is the best time to glue. So if you glue now and then like make sure you don't glue these central threads because otherwise you'll you'll get them a bit stuck together. But if you put a bit of glue there and a bit of glue there and then pull tight, just as you like just before the glue is drying you add the glue and then tighten it so that the glue is inside but make sure your little center piece can still slide so i'll just show you real quick um the mechanism so it should hopefully slide fairly nicely there we go nice so there's maximum size and then when i want to wear it so you'd have it at maximum size to get it on your wrist and then when you want to wear it You'll just pull one side, then pull the beads on the other side. Whoops. There you go. And look at that. And it comes and it's nice and firm and done and everything. I'll show you it. Wait, I'll zoom out and I'll show you it with a real bracelet. Not like a... Yeah, that'll do. That's uh, a decent size. So, like I said, you can... I'll show you on one. Here's one I made earlier. <laughs> I like saying that. It's like reminds me of tele shopping, um, and 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 cooking shows, like we've been doing a cooking show almost. Um, but yeah. So what you can do, essentially, here we go. So I'll just make it maximum size, which is really big. You just put your hand inside, and then here's a trick for doing it uh, one-handed finger on the knot, pull one side like that, pull, 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 then you can just turn it around and then use your middle finger on there and pull with your index and your thumb, whoops, there we go, and pull, 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 all three threads, nice and tight, there we go, and there, there you go, now it's exactly to my size, look at that, isn't that handy? See, nice and easy. Jermaine said, oh, look, it's a ring or maybe a bracelet for a teddy, which is quite cute. There you go. Look at that. That's actually quite a nice little ring, isn't it? What do we think about that? I quite like that. I mean, it's not quite my vibe. I, I don't know if I'd wear that, except when I'm, uh, you know, hitting the uh, hitting the bars on a Wednesday night, maybe. Who knows? Um, but yeah, no. Uh, could make for a fairly nice ring, actually. Um, but yeah, or a bracelet for a teddy bear, as Jermaine suggests. But yeah, you can see it fits me exactly. If I want it a little looser, I can just slide my finger underneath and now it's a bit looser, you know, see? Or I'll go, nah, I think I will tighten it back up again. Pull. And there you go. It's nice and tight. Done. Easy. There you go. Look at that. And there is your finished bracelet. Um, so essentially, that is the entire task. You just need to glue your little ends um, on there so that they're nice and firm and everything looks super neat. 
Let me just get a bit of focus there, zoom in a bit. So there you go. So just as a quick recap of very manly, says Evelyn. Oh, I think so, yes, definitely. Um, makes my eyes pop. Uh, but yeah, um, there we go. So you make, first thing you do is create your little section of beadwork on one side. You do your little crystals, which just as a quick recap, you do a half hitch knot followed by two square knots on one side, then a half hitch knot followed by two square knots on the other side. Slide up your middle bead and just do two square knots in the middle. Uh, and then continue until you're all the way at the bottom. Make sure you finish with two little square knots there and then tie all of your threads together and make the other side exactly the same and then make your sliding knot clasp. Easy peasy as that. Pull. And then this is a really handy one for necklaces especially, I reckon, just because when you want to wear a necklace, you can change the um, the size of it. So if, for example, you wanted it... Um, uh, yeah, if you, if you wanted... Um, like a necklace, you could use this square knot technique um, to make your sliding knot clasp. And the great thing is, if you've got like a, a relatively high cut top, you just pull it a little bit tighter, like that. If you want it to be a little bit longer, you just make it a little looser so that it sits exactly into the cutout of your top. So it works really, really well like that. Um, also, a great thing about this cord, again, because it's not waxed or anything, you can stick it in the wash if you want to. I don't know what would happen to the crystals, if I'm honest. I'm sure they'd be fine, but they might get a bit knocked around. So maybe wash it by hand. I wouldn't stick it in the washing machine. But you can use water on it. Um, let me just check and see in a second if we've had any more people send in their pictures so don't forget if you want to be on the show send us your pictures to live at beadspider.co.uk and i will get you featured on the show um one quick little recap if you didn't see it on wednesday or you missed today's show it will be live and on demand in just a minute um when i finished um but yeah so don't forget um i'll just show you on the website really quickly where to find all of these things so that you can get them but yeah if you head to the link that says upcoming shows it takes you to this page um, where you will see what I've got coming up. So this week I've got, I've just finished the macrame um, honeycomb tutorial just here. I'm going to be doing the netted crystals, which is, um, let me just see if I can find the picture for you. Whoops, wrong one. No, there we go. Um, this is what's coming up on Saturday. So the netted tutorial just there. That is what I'm going to be making on saturday so that is from this link just here it will take you to the pattern plus any three for 20 pounds on those um gorgeous little uh necklaces over there which wait a second i'll just show you uh there's all of these colors just here um any three that you like for 20 pounds with this product just here you just go in and choose whichever one you like that's available until april fourth i think um actually i might extend that a little bit longer because that's when i'm doing the tutorial uh, i might make that until next wednesday so maybe the the seventh or something or eighth whatever it is um but yeah there's the the hollywood bracelets there's a an aurora crystal bundle this i love these beads give them a look give them a try they are amazing and it's on sale plus we have a four mil bicone bundle um, which you get eight strands of bicones in there, a discount to. Um, and then these are the different necklace kits that we have, which if I just show you real quick, um, here we go. Oh, there's that lovely picture of Maxine wearing one of the uh, the necklaces there. That's the, the gold version, which goes great with the 
gold um, Hollywood bangle. It's the same sort of design, but yeah, graduated necklace. So you can see it just there in the middle. It's a little bit thicker and then it gets a bit thinner into the outsides. Hopefully you can see it in the image there. But anyway, there's also the teal color as well, which is quite lovely. Uh, but that comes in quite a few colors, which if I just jump back, um, you can see there's um, up the top, there's a purple, a blue, that lovely emerald color, the silver rainbow, and then the sparkling gold. Um, and then we have a few other, you know, sea beads and things um, in there too. Um, and then next Wednesday, I'm doing the, the dagger designs. I'm going to make things from the dagger designs. And lastly, lastly, I'll just show you, last week, I made the Dancing Cubes crystal bracelet, which lots of people have sent their pictures in of that. Thank you very much to them. Um, that one, if you want to just jump on and have a look at Wednesday's tutorial, you can find that if you go onto the Bead Spider website. Up at the top, uh, I don't think I can quite show it to you, but just above this little image is, wait, let's see if this will work. No, not going to work for me. Um, but yeah, just above here is a little bit of menu and it says kits and tutorials. And then on there, if you go to our video tutorials section, inside there, look, there's today's tutorial, there's previous tutorials. You can access that tutorial that I did last week right here. If you check it out, see the little play button. And then, hey, there we go. There's there's me live again. Let's fast forward. Check it out. Who's this guy? <laughs> um, but yeah, that is <clears throat> um, right there on the website if you want to access that. Um, so yeah, definitely head over to the website and check that out if you fancy. Um, but yeah, I will just have a quick look now and see what pictures we've had sent through by people um, for today's show for whoever sent in their live pictures. I'll just pop it at the bottom just in case you missed it. The email address will come up in just a second for you to see while I add a few pictures. Um, let's see who sent some things in. Um, but yeah, what's everybody, what did everybody think of today's tutorial, by the way? Um, I want to know, um, yeah, I want to know what you thought. What do you think about the things that are coming up? Which one are you more excited for, by the way? The, um, the dagger designs or the, um, the, the beaded netting? Let me know which one you, which one you thought was better. I would love to know which one you liked. Just give me a second. Let's see what images have come through to us today. Are there any in there? Here we go. Yes, great. <laughs> uh, I'm looking forward to showing you one of those. There's a picture of my little nephew coming up too. Um, uh, let's see. There we go. Uh, so first things first, we have a picture from Colleen. I think my cubes are larger than yours. The tube says four millimeter. Yes, we used three millimeter um, cubes in my design the other day, but that looks amazing. Thank you very, very much, Colleen, for sending in your picture just there. Um, she sent us in another one as well. Um, I enjoy your show. I have to see it as a rerun. Oh, well, doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, I'm glad you, uh, hopefully you're watching sometime in the future right now. Um, uh, and we'll see that. Tina, I wanted to learn the bracelet you did today. I will be teaching a class on it. Great. I hope it was uh, informative for you. Um, if it helps, definitely grab the pattern on our website, which is only two pounds, and it covers the full process beginning to end and how many beads you need and all of those sorts of things in there. Uh, Carissa, aka Rissa Renee, um, the dragon gem.com. Yeah, she does absolutely beautiful uh, wire work, far, far better wire work than I could do for sure. Um, but yeah, she has a little Facebook page there as well that I've gone on and watched, uh, you know, had a little look at. Um, but yeah, she does tutorial videos on making these um, beautiful sorts of designs. So if you fancy having a look at some wire work stuff, um, she's got some great tutorials. So have a little look. But yeah, this was her work in progress. Now it's finished into a beautiful moonstone pendant um, and then copper wire weaving um, and then some chain mail too, it seems. Two into one chain mail. Looks amazing. That is fantastic. I love it. 
Um, what else do we have? Elaine in Nottingham, she's a regular. Thank you very, very much for sending in and being just a regular. I really appreciate um, you regulars who come on all the time. We've got quite a few of you now. Um, I appreciate that. Um, Elaine in Nottingham, I made this sunflower design star this week. Looks amazing. I love it. The, the colours look great. It's a beautiful little sunflower in the middle of that star. Um, Jermaine, oh, Mother Jermaine, uh, she's been making Sicilian granita because my, uh, my brother-in-law, my sister's husband, he is from Sicily and he absolutely loves granita, which is kind of like, um, almost like a sorbet, I suppose, but not quite the same. Uh, but yeah, you, you use like beautiful fruits and things to make these delicious sort of sorbet style ice creams that are amazing. Um, but yeah, hi to everyone who's in London watching, which is Jermaine and my dad, Andrew. Hopefully my sister, Alex, is watching if she's not too busy with Leonardo and Moreno, who's the Sicilian. Um, and there's there's little Leonardo, my nephew now. Uh, he's enjoying the show, but has no idea what you're on about. I'm not surprised. That's my nephew, everyone. That's Leonardo. Uh, he's super cute um, with looks like my dad's headphones right there. Um, but yeah, that's that's little Leonardo. He's super cute. And then Kelly in Australia. Oh, she's got two. She sent in what she's been making, both in the kitchen and on her bead mat. So homemade sausage rolls. Oh, man, I really want a sausage roll now, please. Oh, I've got to go make one. Um, and then it looks like a beautiful, probably right angle weave with some picoing on her bracelet right there. That looks fantastic. So thank you very much to Kelly. And now we're back at the beginning. So um, yeah, thank you guys very, very much for watching. Um, I hope you liked all of those pictures that people sent in. They were fantastic. That was really great. Don't forget to send your pictures. I know you've missed out on today's show, but any that you send in between now and when I do my video on Saturday, I'm going to try and get them on the show for Saturday. I really, this is like possibly my favorite part of the whole segment. I really like showing off other people's work um, and what they've been getting up to in their designs and everything. Um, unbelievable today, the very first time I finished my cup of tea. Well done to me. That's uh, a new record when it comes to streaming these shows. I've actually managed to uh, finish my uh, tea. Let me just tilt this down. It seems a bit high. Um, there we go. Um, but yeah, what did we all think of my my tutorial? Um, quite a lot of people. I've just been missing out on all of your comments. Um, let's see. I like the cubes color, says Evelyn. Um, Sharon, lots of people are loving Carissa's uh, pendant there in the comments. I, I agree completely um, that... Um, uh, her her design there with the wire work is great, but like I said, if you, I'm, I'm pretty sure she's got some tutorial videos that you can check out. Uh, the Dragon's Gem, I think she said it was called. Um, they've got a Facebook page and she's got some live videos on there, so check those out too if you want to learn some wire working, because it won't be from me anywhere near as good quality wire work as from her. Um, but yeah, um, don't forget I will be seeing you for my tutorial on Saturday. I, I should have brought the, the finished piece so that you could have a little look and see it in the flesh um, of that um, of that Hollywood because it's potentially one of our most popular kits. I'd say it's probably in our top three most popular kits, the one that you get uh, any three for 20, the Hollywood. Um, it's really, really gorgeous in, in person because you've got like this netting of beads and then underneath you've got these crystals that really bling out sort of within. Um, it's like a, a great netting technique, but um, definitely uh, check out the um, the little product page in the what's coming up, you know, upcoming shows bit uh, to have a little look. And definitely if you like daggers, I'll see you on Wednesday as well because I'm going to be doing some dagger designs. The book there, I think it's got about six, maybe even seven different designs. Can't remember exactly. Maybe maybe slightly less. I'm not sure. But um, the book in there, it's going to cover far more than I'm going to do in the tutorial. So if you want to get ahead and try it out, get the pattern from the website of that um, that little booklet. I am going to enjoy my afternoon. Actually, that's not true. That's a complete lie. I was going, I'll enjoy my evening, but first I need to go down to the office and make sure I start sending off your orders. I see we've had quite a few orders come through while I've been doing the show. So um, 
lots of people saying thank you. Uh, they're saying they love the tutorials. Um, I, I, I really appreciate the feedback. It's um, fantastic that you all really enjoy the tutorials that I that I do for you. I try to make them as clear as possible. Oh, whoops. Um, I've still got that thing showing at the bottom. You don't need to see that anymore. Um, but yeah, I try and make them as clear and as easy to follow as possible because um, if it's a good quality tutorial, it will just mean that more and more people will, will enjoy them. So definitely, if you haven't yet, I would really appreciate if you'll give me a share. Um, like and subscribe as well to the link in the description. That way, when I do tutorials, you'll know. You'll get an email like anyone else who was on the list this morning. Um, about 15 minutes before the show saying click this link but the great thing is the same link even if you come to the show after I've finished will take you straight to the page where you can watch it on demand so you don't need to worry about that that's the best way if you want to watch these shows even if you're not going to have time to watch it live check it out subscribe because you will get notified and it will take you straight to the page where you can watch on demand after the show. Um, but yeah, thank you all very, very much for watching. I will see you for another tutorial on Saturday. Um, but yeah, have a nice day. I will see you all then. Bye-bye.